Hello, my name's George Rook um, and this film is about living with dementia after diagnosis. I was diagnosed, diagnosed age 63 with mixed dementia, Alzheimer's and vascular. I was expecting uh, it to be vascular uh, dementia, having had a double coronary bypass when I was 51 and high cholesterol ever since. But to find out that I had Alzheimer's as well was a shock, uh, as it was for my wife. So how was I given the diagnosis? Well, during the consultation, all three clinical staff answered mobile phone calls. They deemed the calls more important than me and my wife sitting in front of them, and that was very annoying. When we left the room, we were on our own. Nowhere to sit and have a cup of tea and reflect. No one to talk about it. Just goodbye. The nurse will be in touch in a few days. And when the outreach sister did come round, I got a bundle of leaflets and booklets about the disease, about Alzheimer's Society, about power of attorney. No local information about who we might talk to in Shropshire or groups we might go to. So, a diagnosis, it's a bereavement. For a person with dementia, it's a death sentence. It is the loss of your future. It is terminal. It is a huge void. For the spouse, partner or family, it's also bereavement. <clears throat> it's the loss of their spouse or parent. The loss of their spouse or parent. <clears throat> the loss of a future together. The loss of retirement together after a lifetime of working. <clears throat> and it's hopeless because there's no cure. There's no stopping the disease causing the dementia. It's frightening and it can look like the end of life as we knew it. <clears throat> it's also what many people regard as the most frightening disease of all. More so than cancer now and probably the most misunderstood disease. <clears throat> so what would I have valued? Someone with a disease to talk to either when walking out of the consultation or when it felt right sometime in the next few weeks. Someone with a disease, I say. To hear that actual life goes on just the same, that you mustn't stop doing what you enjoy, that you should continue to take all the same risks you did before diagnosis, and to meet other people with a diagnosis at the same or similar stage, I now know how important and value it is to sit down with people with dementia at the same-ish stage. <clears throat> so then the week, days and weeks pass and many people don't know how to feel. If you're in a positive mood, you may think it's good to know what has been causing these small but growing difficulties. If you're feeling down, on the other hand, you may think you don't want to know anyone and you don't want anyone to know. You don't want to meet people because they will think you are stupid or mentally ill because you can't finish a sentence or keep up with them and you're ashamed that you are no longer normal and able. <clears throat> you may find that friends and family no longer visit. They don't know what to say. They don't understand the disease. They might even think they could catch it off you. I have heard that. They want to remember you how, they, how you used to be, so they stay away. And again, I've heard that plenty of times. They imagine you can't talk or do things any longer because you have this awful frightening disease. They can't stand the thought of long silences and embarrassing forgetfulness. So how does this make you feel? when no one actually wants to listen to how you feel. <clears throat> when you think about dementia, you think about it all the time. You question everything you do or say. Why? Because every trip or mistake or lost word 
is a reminder that things no longer happen automatically. And if you don't pause and prepare before you do something, you may well do it wrong or forget to do it at all. Every day you question whether you've got worse. It's not a morbid introspection. People say that their loved ones who live with brain disease become self-obsessed. They become less able to think of other people's feelings and needs. Well, that's because you're continually examining your actions and your memories and your words to find the right ones or to avoid mistakes. So I think we end up li living two different lives. <clears throat> the first one is our inner self, the one with dementia, who feels lost at times, fogged, unable now and then to do things we used to do without thinking. And this inner self has feelings and reflections which you cannot share because people don't want to hear. So you feel lonely and you withdraw further. The second life is the outward facing self, the one who bravely gets on with a smile because that's what others want to see. This self is a denial, it's living behind a mask. <clears throat> and this is why we value peer support groups so much, because the only people who understand us are people living with dementia. We can open up, we can open up our inner selves reveal our anxieties and doubts, we can know that other people feel them too. And we can laugh at our mistakes and at getting stuck in a sentence or just curse the world. <clears throat> Peer groups enable us to get rid of some of our accumulated emotion and introspection so we can look out, the world, look out at the world again and engage with other things and other people. We are, after all, the same person as before the diagnosis. We have probably been incubating that brain disease for over 20 years and have been aware of slight symptoms for several. The diagnosis doesn't change us. It may give us some palliative treatment that eases the effects and it may enable us to get some support when we need it. But we are the same person. The same things give us joy and make us smile. We like the same food and drink. We can make choices just as we could a year earlier. For better or for worse, they are our choices. They are our choices and we must be allowed to continue to make them. As the disease progresses, we will indeed suffer at times. We will suffer, knowing that we can no longer do or say what we used to do. We will need some help now and then. But we are still inside. We are still inside. So you need to make the effort to reach into our minds and our memories and meet us where we find ourselves. It may not be the world you know, but please, just come with us. Don't tell us we are wrong, or we shouldn't do or say this or that. Just come with us into our reality as we recede from yours. The end is far off. The disease usually takes many years to debilitate us. So help us to do what makes us smile while we can, rather than slinking off into a dark corner to be forgotten. There are times for all of us when things get too much and the fog descends. Don't ignore us when that happens. Just reach out and hold our hand and listen. Thank you. Hello, my name's George Rook. Um, and this film is about living with dementia after diagnosis. I was diagnosed, as, diagnosed age 63 with mixed dementia, Alzheimer's and vascular. I was expecting uh, it to be vascular uh, dementia, having had a double coronary bypass when I was 51 and high cholesterol ever since. But 
To find out that I had Alzheimer's as well was a shock, uh, as it was for my wife. So how was I given the diagnosis?